Hey everyone, this is uh, Nick from the miniquadclub.com. Um, just wanted to do a little video about the uh, Thrust UAV Hyperlite 275 build I'm working on. Uh, it'll be a complete review. I'm going to try to do it in three parts. Uh, this will be part number one where we talk about uh, fit and finish. Um, part number two will be the build itself and trying to go over any issues I might have had with the build itself or uh, you know anything I notice about the build in general that's a little bit different. Uh, having come from a spanky frame, which is you know G10 and a little bit more straightforward of a build, I'm kind of really looking forward to uh, you know getting my hands dirty with something a little bit more uh, complex. So this is pretty exciting. Um, just to start, I, I kind of cheated a little bit and opened up these two um, just to review again here with everybody. So power distribution board. Um, I got to say that <laughs> I'm not exactly sure what this is made out of at this time, but uh, I have to say that it's probably feels almost as light as the abuse mark board that I used on my spanky build and it's obviously much bigger and um, you know is laid out uh, what I consider to be better um, and you'll see how these four ESCs sit on here uh, I kind of like it better it seems like they're gonna be lined up pretty nicely and, and pretty balanced so uh, no, no flex in this whatsoever just FYI um, depending on how you build your legs for the the uh, Hyperlite 275 this may be um, what you land on um, and I, honestly, after seeing uh, seeing it in person and touching it, feeling it, seeing how the construction is, I'm really not too concerned with that. Um, probably put some legs on it anyway on the arm somehow, but we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Uh, carbon fiber. This is the bottom plate. Um, there's obviously holes drilled for a, a naze and CC3D, and it looks like a, a larger set that's probably for a, uh, I don't know, maybe a KK2 board or something like that. Um, just to talk a little bit about the materials. Um, very thin carbon fiber, but as you can see, and I hope it gets focused on it, uh, very, very well made carbon fiber. Uh, a lot of times you look at the edges of this stuff and you can tell, you know, it's, it's cheap fiber or the, uh, the core doesn't look like it's been cut clean. This is, this is really nice. Um, very, I mean, I'm pushing pretty hard, very little flex, um, very little flex even on the battery on this, or the battery holder for if you use a GoPro. Um, this is what the tail's for, GoPro up front. Um, very, I mean, I'm really giving this a twist. So, like I said, I can't to compare, you know, it's for the thinness that this thing really has and how light it is. And it, I mean, I'm telling you, this thing weighs next to nothing. Um, it's really sturdy. Um, so I'm kind of really impressed with that so far. Um, unlike a lot of the Chinese quads you see out there, um, every single hole on this thing is, is drilled out nicely. I'm sure you could see that. Um, there's there, I mean, I, can't, I haven't really found any uh, little fibers on the edges or holes that were miscut. This is, this is really nice. And as you go over with your thumb or your finger, you don't really, there's no edges. I mean, this is, this is real carbon fiber, guys, and it's beautiful. So let's just get that out of the way. So, you know, so we got that. Um, let's, let's open uh, the top plate. And a little comment about the top plate. Um, I really, really like the wider design that this quad has. Um, it's really not much bigger than um, the 250 mini quads, but what I do like about it is the fact that there's more room to store everything. I mean, your, your flight controller sits about here, and you can actually put your VTX next to it. There's room above, obviously, but you have a lot of space um, to, to, to use. And I, again, um, I'm giving this a lot of force. Not too much flex at all. I mean, it feels very, very strong. Um, certainly stronger and, and more importantly than just stronger, uh, it feels as if, you know, vibration-wise, or when it crashes, that it's going to get evenly dispersed through this design. I hope. Um, I've seen some crashes online of it, and it's obviously held up. I haven't seen any uh, blood baths yet, but uh, feels real good. And uh, again, there's another battery. You can put a strap to the top, which is recommended uh, fit configuration for if you're using a Mobius camera. Um, two holes for SMA, which is nice. Um, uh, you know, uh, from being a member of the group, how many times I've crashed and killed my. Um, Spyro net, so I feel that I would never fry, fly a frame. <laughs> excuse me, I would never fly a frame that didn't have the holes for an SMA, uh, just to protect that VTX somewhere inside the the, uh, the body. So I got to say that this is nice. Again, you notice here for the GoPro people, and I do have a GoPro. I'm going to try on this guy as well and the Mobius. Um, you can actually start and stop the uh, recording right through the top of the frame, and I think that's pretty brilliant. Um, you know, once it's mounted in there, you certainly don't want to be having to pull it out and pull it in all the time. So I think for the GoPro users out there, it's going to work really nicely. And for the Mobius users, you have plenty of room to get your digits in there and, and hit record. So I just think that's a really nice touch. Um, and I really like the idea um, 
of going and keeping the GoPro inside the frame. Uh, one of my pet peeves about a lot of frames is you got the GoPro on top where it's just going to get slashed or did, uh, when you're running into a, a power line like we love to do. Um, holding it underneath like I know some people do. I believe Justin on the, his spanky holds it underneath. Um, he has a carbon fiber holder for it so it's protected but again it's, it's still hanging off that chin. So the idea of keeping it inside the frame um, from that perspective on a 275 size quad it's pretty badass. Um, so you know that's really you know overview of the carbon pieces. Um, again, really nice stuff. Um, <clears throat> I know I posted a picture about some of the stuff the other day, but just to kind of um, reiterate, um, I got to say that I love this. Um, I know a lot of you had some comments about, well, packaging isn't important, how it flies is important. And I understand that, and I agree. Um, again, my last frame, you know, a lot of people made comments when I made a comment about uh, the parts coming in a, in a uh, sandwich bag, uh, you know, honestly. Um, it is what it is. I mean, I understand there's a hobbyist level and there's a, a pro level of, of this in this business. Um, you know, getting this kit assembled, you know, or packaged this way um, when I when it arrived, it made it feel like it was a high-end RC kit that uh, we probably all started with as a kid. Um, it brought me back to the days of associated RC 10 T's, which I have a T3 still. Uh, you know, you open that package and it was just fantastic. All the parts were clean and, and, and separated, and you know, really just a pro level kit. And you you paid good money for it, but you got what you know what what it was worth. And I just want to say that you know, receiving the parts like this, while you know it might not change the flight characteristics of the actual quadcopter, uh, I got to say that it's certainly refreshing and. Uh, it makes you really realize that you know you're getting your dollars worth, um, you know, and which it really the price price wise, uh, it's it's really not uh, expensive for what you're getting in the first place. I uh, I must say that I'm I'm pretty impressed. So um, you know we have um, some look at bulk, some bulkhead looking things that actually I shouldn't say that's probably the wrong word, but you know they go across the arms to help give it some more rigidity. Both carbon fiber looking pretty nice. Um, includes a nice little uh, JST, so if we can add, you know, we need some more 12 volt power, we kind of got that living here. There's six of these standoffs, and I gotta say, um, I've already kind of, again, cheated and took them apart to look at them. These little guys, and I hope you can see this, these are beautifully machined, and uh, from t in talking to, with EJ, um, I found out that he actually gets these sourced locally, I believe, um, in Boise, Idaho, and I gotta say that whoever makes these does a fantastic job. Um, you can order these, of course, on eBay or Amazon from China, and you're going to get what you pay for. Um, this thing is extremely light. There's, I mean, it's probably lighter than the plastic ones that I've used before. Um, it certainly is more, uh, you know, nice to look at, and I'd say that, um, you know, just fit and finish is, again, really just beautiful. I mean, you, what you would, you know, you get what you, what you pay for. Um, we have some little plastic O-rings that sit between the carbon and some of the screws uh, for the arm mounting. There's some um, small little nuts to mount the arms with, and we have some, some other screws, all uh, hex head by the way, which again, um, it's nice to know that when you want to do maintenance on it, and you will, you know, you're going to be taking apart upgrading parts, pieces, VTXs, things like that. It's really nice to know that the ends of these things uh, aren't going to strip out, and they're not just cheap little uh, Phillips head screws. So. Uh, again, nice job with this whole parts kit here. Um, I know there's a few of you out there that made some comments when I first mentioned the thrust about the arms being aluminum and oh my god, they might be, you know, you were just going to bend them aluminum so weak. But let me tell you, um, let me open these. Um, for one, these are T6 aluminum and if any of you guys uh, are familiar with aluminum or aluminium for you, those of you over the, over the pond, uh, these things are T6 and I got to say that you can grab them and twist. I'm twisting as hard as I can and there's zero give zero I mean obviously an impact is an impact but I gotta say that the design of these and the channels that are cut out of these give it the rigidity that I mean it's it's not it's not what you'd expect that's not bending that's my hand not holding it tight enough I mean I can't again that's my hand not the actual thing I mean I got full pressure on this thing there's zero zero bend either direction um, one of the nice touches I thought that this quad really had too was this little, almost a motor guard that's built right into it. And so, you know, once you mount your motors, a lot of times, you know, you get the cheap Chinese quad knockoffs that are so small on the ends of the arms so that your motor's on the edge. When you crash, you hit that motor and you're done. Uh, there goes a motor. And, uh, you know, it sucks if you're using an $8 motor and it sucks if you're using a $45 motor. Either way, you're grounded for the weekend and it sucks. Um, these guys, you know, not only are they super strong, but 
this little cup around the motor, I mean, you'd have to come at such an odd angle to hit the motor. And then, you know, even then, no other arm would ever provide protection from this direction, you know, straight on like this, unless it was really cut quite a bit larger. So really looking forward to the crashability of this quad, if you will, because um, it really gets some protection on there. So well done. I mean, obviously it gives you added strength as well from the way the aluminum is, but, uh, you know, strength plus protection, I don't know what anybody could want uh, more than that. Uh, again, the fit and finish, I mean, these things are just beautiful. I mean, I'm rubbing my hands all over these things. No burrs sticking out and everything's been sanded and just silky smooth. Um, the inside has been milled really, really nicely. Um, you can just see, you know, hopefully you see in the video here how nice that finish really is. So again, um, even the motor, the thickness here where the motor mounts to, very, very strong. There's no give there uh, at all. So um, quite a bit, quite really light. Um, I'm not sure how it would compare to an arm of carbon fiber that was this size, but I gotta say that, I mean, coming from a G10 quad like I have right now, um, these pieces individually are light, and I'm sure that once I build the bottom plate in the four arms, that uh, it's probably going to weigh a significant amount less than my current uh, setup does. So that's it's pretty pretty fantastic. Um, so really, that's that's the basics of the kit. Um, some other pieces that come along, which are just nice to have. Uh, really, pretty nice little battery strap. It's actually really nice. It's got some double stitching down it. it comes with so that you know you're covered there, so you don't have to worry about a battery strap. Um, some standoffs for your flight controller. Um, those came with my kit. And uh, you know, that pr summarizes pretty much the kit. I mean, everything you need to build your Hyperlite 275. For this particular build, uh, I'm going to be going with the CC3D. Um, for those of you who've been following along, I, uh, I took this out of the Spanky frame and decided to use it on here um, for two reasons. One, um, I really, really like this board. I know that a lot of you guys give me shit for it. Uh, but honestly, uh, in Rattitude mode, which is a stabilization mode slash rate mode that's very similar to Horizon mode on the Naze, this thing is fantastic. Uh, for, the, for a beginner pilot just trying to get into quads, I know it's a little expensive compared to Naze, and I'm not suggesting that you know anybody thinks it's better or worse, but there's just I, I really do believe after using both for a little bit now that each one has its purpose. Uh, if you look to fly stability with, um, you know, a... a a gimbal which is what I'm going to eventually put on this hyperlight because I want to put a gimbal on the front of it and that'll be a review here coming up. Um, this is really the board I feel you should go with to, to do all that. Uh, it's a little bit more pricey. Um, there's some places out there that do have it cheaper uh, so shop around. Um, Get FPV was a little bit pricey. I, wanted, I think I paid $90 for this when I bought it. I've since seen it on um, RMRC um, out, of, out of Ohio uh, for I think maybe $60 uh, maybe even a little south of that. So, you know, make sure you shop around, um, you know, but and make sure you get one that actually is, is legitimate. Uh, obviously, get FPV and um, ready made RC and anyone else who carries this that's a, a reputable dealer, um, you know, is going to have authentic ones. Uh, but, you know, there's been some people that have ordered off eBay where they haven't come with a bootload or things like that. And to me, you know, just pay a little bit more money, get it from some place you can trust, and uh, then you don't have any problems. So, that's what I'll be using as a flight controller. Um, I'll be using this breakout cable. Uh, to go to my um, AR6210 uh, receiver. Um, I took the satellite receiver and just left it on the Spanky for now, so this will be the receiver I use for it. Um, ESC-wise, we're going to go with the, uh, some T-Motor 12 amp. Um, they're real, pretty nice. Um, interesting that they come with the JSD connector. Obviously, that's going to get cut right off to be mounted onto the uh, power distribution board, so no big deal. Just kind of, you know, new to me. But uh, I guess for the right person or the right use, it's probably pretty nice to be able to plug and play. So, you know, it is what it is. Um, these are flash with Simon K, so, you know, no need to configure them or try to uh, set endpoints or anything like that inside the, uh, the GUI or the uh, program for either um, open pilot or base flight. Um, that's one thing that, you know, a lot of people like to argue about. Um, I had a long conversation with a few people in the group about it in the past, and, uh, and when I first built my Spanky, it was a big deal on Open Pilot 4. I even went back and forth with quite a few people. And, and it turns out that, you know, even though a lot of people say you should calibrate your ESCs, that Simon K firmware, when you do install the firmware on these, that does set endpoints that are pretty standard. So the only thing you could probably do by trying to calibrate them is probably mess it up. So I'm going to tell, I'm going to say this, that, uh, you know, if you're Simon K and you flashed it, 
don't calibrate. Um, you know, you, I'm sure that it, there's times where it'll work fine, but the guys that I talk to that know uh, better than I do, obviously, um, you know, what they're talking about seem to uh, agree as well. So I'm going to say, you know, don't calibrate them. So that's that's the ESCs I'm going to use. Um, I'm using bullet connectors. I know a lot of people um, are anti-bullet connector because they're a point of failure when you're flying. I never really had an issue with them on Spanky. I keep the uh, wire both in front and behind of them wire tied down so they can't come apart. Um, one of the things I like about them is that uh, depending on your motors, the motors might come with them, so it's nice just to get it built faster. Also in the field, um, if you ever do have a crash and you feel like you need to throw a motor back on and get in the air, I don't know about you, but I don't carry my soldering iron to the field. And uh, sometimes if I'm 45 minutes away from my, uh, my house, I certainly don't want to have to drive back just to do some soldering and drive back out. So for me, I'm a bullet connector guy. I totally get it. It's not, there's, you know, no, I don't think there's any real right answer. Um, is it a point of failure, a possible point of failure? Absolutely, can't lie about that. But then, but then again, bad soldering between the wires and the, uh, the ESCs and the motors could be bad soldering as well, or uh, point of failure as well. So, you know, to each their own, uh, I'm gonna go with them. Couldn't find, none of the hobby stores uh, in my area are really worth a damn, um, as I'm sure you guys are experiencing as well. Uh, I had two packs from the, the Spanky Build Extra I found one pack in town and then I had to go with this quality RC part, which I'm sure is probably not all that uh, quality, but it is what it is. And then lastly, uh, since I want to run this on 4S, uh, we kind of went with this these KV2000 motors. Um, I have one of them opened over here. Uh, obviously, we know T motors, you know, a little pricey sometimes, but uh, you know, everybody who used them kind of swears by them for the most part. Uh, these guys are uh, pretty nice, um, I must say. I've never used the T-Motors. Um, I have a buddy of mine that flies blackout with T-Motors and he's very happy with them. Coming from the sunny skies, I look for these to be a, a, you know, a, nice, uh, a little bit nicer motor for the price. Um, obviously, the fit and finish of these compared to a sunny sky motor, to me, it is a lot nicer. Um, you know, we have this two-tone kind of look, and the machining is nice and clean. And I really haven't. I'm, I, while I'm sure that every motor has its share of problems, uh, I think we're all aware of the Sunny Sky dilemma of 2014, where we had um, some serious glue problems with the Sunny Sky. So I really look forward to being able to to test these out. And again, these are 2,000 kV. So I, I have, you know, I'm a little cautious running the Sunny Skies with all the glue magnet problems at the 2300 on 4S. Uh, but these at 2000, even though they're rated for 2 to 3S, uh, plenty of people run these on 4 with no problems. Same thing with the ESCs. So I'm not looking to really have any issue with that. So that's pretty much the overview of the build. I'm gonna try to get started on this this evening. Do uh, there'll be another video that I'll post that'll go through the soldering process, and uh, we'll get this power distribution board all all set up, and uh, we'll go from there.